Hey all, thank you for checking out my channel. I am Chris Daniels, AKA CD Play Zero, and I am a professional fingerboarder. First off, you might be asking, what is a fingerboarder? But first, I have to give a shout out to YouTube for featuring me as a creator on the rise. This brought a ton of new eyeballs to my videos and subscribers to my channel. So for those that are new here, I'll explain a little bit. What is fingerboarding? Fingerboarding is a hobby where enthusiasts use their fingers to perform their tricks on miniature skateboard replicas. These miniature skateboards, also known as fingerboards, are roughly 1 8 scale and made of multiple components. The deck, which typically is made of plastic or wood, the wheels, which are made from plastic, urethane, or nylon, and the trucks, which are made from metal. With more expensive fingerboards, consisting of features such as bearings within the wheels, which contribute towards a smooth ride, as well as lock nuts, which prevent wheels from flying off, and the truck hangers from going all over the place. Fingerboarders, those who are hobbyists within the community, attempt to perform tricks on their fingerboards, and it is reminiscent of their larger cousin, skateboarding. For example, a cake flip can be performed on a skateboard as well as on a fingerboard. Additionally, a fingerboarder can combine tricks together to perform increasingly more advanced tricks, just like a skateboarder can do. Now that we've covered the basics on what fingerboarding is, let's learn a little bit about the history of fingerboarding. So why would you listen to me? I'm Chris Daniels, as I said before. I've been fingerboarding since 1998, and I've been a professional fingerboarder since the early 2000s. I've toured all over the world and visited places such as Los Angeles, Boston, Santa Cruz, Toronto, Munich, Berlin, and Milan, among others. I've been featured in commercials as well as in magazines, and I have a ton of experience in fingerboarding. Additionally, I've won contests online as well as competed in in-person events as well. So I'm a pretty good knowledge base for what fingerboarding is, and that is why you can listen to me and trust what I'm saying. Let's jump in and learn about the history of fingerboarding. Fingerboarding has its origins in skateboarding. Probably back in the 1970s, skateboard companies began to promote skateboarding by creating skateboard keychains. Some people who received those keychains realized that the keychains could be removed and then you could roll around and do tricks with your fingers. There's not much videos from before the 1990s of fingerboarding, but we do have footage from pioneers such as Martin Winkler, Dennis Steenmack, Damien Bernadet, as well as Tony Potex. In 1998, Tactex, which were mass-produced fingerboard toys, were released and took the United States as well as the world by storm. During the early days, you could find tech decks in classrooms all over the world and were a teacher's nightmare. Back in 2000, professional fingerboarding began to make its debut. We saw multiple international fingerboard tours, which featured fingerboarders like Darren Langhorst, Matt Johnson, Dan Watson, and Pat Wells. These tours went to Chile and Mexico. Across the Atlantic Ocean, we saw the start of fingerboard contests in Germany. One contest, Bass Fingers, eventually became the world championship for fingerboarding, and to this day has people from all over the world who fly out to Germany to attend. Online communities were focused around websites and message boards which allowed enthusiasts from all over the globe to connect with each other and share their passion for fingerboarding. We saw craftsmen begin to improve the products. These pioneers improved the quality of the product that were available to fingerboarders, which led to increased improvement in tricks and style. YouTube itself was a game changer for fingerboarding, as this platform allowed the hobby to reach the masses. There was a popular fingerboard video which was Alexis Milan, Opa Zero, which was the first viral fingerboard video. And we also saw fingerboarders such as Mike Schneider reach millions of eyeballs. We even saw brands such as Canon, Hermes, Sony, among others, partner with fingerboarding companies as well as fingerboarders to create commercials and promotions, and even saw musicians such as Atmosphere feature fingerboarding in their music videos. But you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know. 
Fingerboarding has continued to ascend in popularity and its future is as bright as ever. For a more detailed look at the history of fingerboarding, be sure to check out my fingerboard history playlist, which you can see in the upper right screen right now. Fingerboarding is a hobby of ingenuity, of creativity, and of passion. And there's many aspects that one can enjoy with the hobby for as little as $3. Whether it's learning new tricks, improving one's style, or the DIY aspect of creating your own fingerboards, fingerboard ramps, and obstacles. It's an amazing hobby for those that are looking for a creative outlet. One can get hours of amusement, maybe even years, as in my case. Thank you all for checking out my channel. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button. Let me know in the comments what you think. And if you've enjoyed this content, be sure to hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. I appreciate you all so much and shout out to you all. Have a great day.